Hey guys, Bruno Build Show. Have a client consulting with trying to help her get mantles, traditional mantles. What do you do? Where do you get them? What's wrong with the ones on the market? Come join me today in the Build Show. Okay, so in order to get a good traditional mantle, as I was saying, I've got this client that I'm consulting with. She's trying to build her traditional house. Her designer builds a design packet for her, which has lamps and tiles and all these other things in it, and it shows mantles. And I'm trying to explain to her that the mantles that she's showing aren't right. She goes, well, show me some good mantles. And so I thought I would try to make it a video today. And here's the challenge, okay? Here we are in 2023 now. The mantles that are on the market today are French and Victorian and colonial and you know English and, and Italian and all these different things. And so it, it can be a muddy mess as we look to back to the past of you know what's a right traditional mantle. And she's trying to build a New England cottage kind of uh, maybe a little bit higher than a cottage style house. And so what would be appropriate for that? And that's why when I talk to people, I'm always asking about, well, what's the narrative? What's the story? What are you trying to tell? When was the house built? Was it built in 1820 or was it built in 1890? All of those things matter and will change the appearance of the mantle. So one of the challenges is to weed through the onslaught of mantle designs that are out there and figuring out what's right. So the first thing is to understand style. And you know, in this situation, when you look at early American mantles, and we'll just go from the Georgian and the federal period, in the early Georgian period, you have what's called a blection molding that wraps around the outside of the mantle place. You see it in the Cecil room at Winter Tour. You see it in the Marlboro room at Winter Tour. In that period, early period, there would have been you know, a, a paneled wall. There would have been a very you know, simple molding that went around the outside, no mantle shelf. So that was the early early period. Now, really good architects like John Staub and some of these other ones that practiced in the 1900s and 1920s would oftentimes put different mantles throughout the house, an early Georgian mantle, a more federal mantle. And so you would see this kind of playing around with, they go in the colonial revival period. And that was kind of the fun things, right? Because you could build a little hierarchy throughout the house based on the mantle. So the first type of mantle is that early Georgian mantle and learn to recognize that simple blection molding around the outside. When you go into the later Georgian period, you begin to see mantle shelves beginning to appear and kind of the more classical mantle being built up where you'd have an architrave that wraps around the marble, a frieze in some manner, and then a cornice. It would look, you know, a little bit like this, right? This might be your mantle, your architrave, down here, your fireplace is here, but this sits up over the top, right? So this would be your mantle shelf up here. That late Georgian era would oftentimes have an overmantle, which is basically your mantle shelf, and then over top of it, you have another composition, sometimes with broken pediments. The Hampton Room at Winter Tour is a good example of that, where they have a really pretty mantle and then an overmantle. In the federal period, which is, you know, 1780 to about 1820, 1830, you, you have a, the neoclassical era is happening. They're much lighter, they're not as heavy. They rarely have overmantles, right? And they have the decoration inside the frieze. So if this is your, you know, mini and tablet over your fireplace, right? You have your architrave, your fireboxes down here. In this case, we have a pulvinated frieze. In the federal period, this would be a flat frieze and it'd be heavily decorated. The Five Room Winter Tour has a beautiful federal mantle and you'll see decoration, these swags and urns and all these neoclassical symbols in that decorative area. And so if you see a mantle that has a lot of decoration like that, you know it's kind of from the federal period. That's it, right? And so if, if, if you look at, you know, Georgian federal mantles, that early colonial mantles, that's kind of your range, okay? Now, one of the, the mantles they showed my client was a French mantle, right? This marble French mantle with this with this curved detail. And I, and I said to her, I said, look, if you're trying to create this story of this house, you know, I can see having an antique or something else coming into your house that found its way there, but not a marble French mantle. It was just kind of, it was a disconnect. Now, 
I, I agree that you can have fun and do other things like that. But again, I try to keep people, try to keep my clients kind of in this narrative, in this story of how this house would have been put together. The challenge for you guys is weeding through all that stuff. And I just wanted to, I, I went on Google and I just said wood mantles or traditional wood mantles. And I just tried to find some mantles out there. The, the first challenge that you have is, is the naming and the marketing that happens with these companies that will say, we've got the Monticello mantle, okay? Or they'll call their wood mantle this Monticello, right? As if it comes from Monticello. Now, the picture I'm showing here is actually the mantle at Monticello, right? It is a great federal mantle, but that is the mantle on a fireplace at Monticello, not this, okay? So one of the challenges is don't believe the, the lies, right? Don't believe the Mount Vernon really has anything to do with Mount Vernon or Monticello or the White House or, or any of those other famous names that these marketers try to associate things with. And so just take the naming part out of it. The second piece is that if we compare the parts and pieces and what happens is, is that in this, this one mantle, they have a little freeze, then there's a dental. You know how I feel about dentals. It's a bad one. And then there's a molding and then there's a shelf, okay? And so, whereas the really good one, okay, has, and it has a little small cross-headed corner uh, right here. The, what happens with the good ones is that you see, and this is where it's hard for me sometimes because I say the difference between good and great is like an eighth of an inch. Here is really where it's the very small details. And I don't know if you look at those two pictures and go, oh yeah, that's obvious which one's better. It's not easy, even for my eye, to look at those mantles and go, well, that one's wrong because, right? And so for one, the cross-headed corner is better. It, it's a little bit more definition. It drops down a little bit further. It's not quite as squatty. We got a pulvinated freeze, same as that one I just showed you here, right? And then here's really where the magic happens because what happens here is I've got a, I've got a really pretty bed mold, right? And then I've got this very strong Corona and then my slimation is up there. And if you compare the two there, I really think that this area right there is kind of the, the trick and the key because this is a visual, visual pause that happens that causes your eye to go, oh, okay, I can read that. Whereas this is just, it, it's kind of muddy. It's kind of unclear exactly what's happened. They're trying to project importance. They're trying to project that a lot of stuff's happening. But we know that dental is kind of ugly. The proportion between the teeth is like, it's bad. <laughs> and so it's like one to eight. And yet this one just communicates better. So here's at least one solution for you as you're looking for mantles. Buy historic mantles, okay? You don't have to reinvent them. You don't have to teach your carpenter how to do the bed mold and cymation and everything else. Now, if you can't and it doesn't fit or whatever else, then buy one and let it be the sample piece for how you're going to build everything else, right? But look at the past. And that's really the starting point because we've lost that art of building. We've lost the understanding of how to put together, you know, these different molding pieces, right? That we've got a bed mold, a, you know, a little soffit, a corona, and then, and then a uh, cymation here. And that there's a proportional relationship between all these different parts and pieces. We've forgotten that. And as I do my study on my book and I look at these historic pattern books, nearly every molding that they use is broken up proportionally. This one's six high to five high, and it's that first part of this is gonna be one part of that five. And I mean, they care about those proportions. They care about those details. That's how they used to build. And so if we can learn from them and practice that today, at least one example is, you know, learning from the past, buying the past, or documenting the past and using it to help you build better. Okay guys, historic mantles, right? Getting them right, building authenticity into the design of your of your project. How do you do it? Look to the past because there's a great examples from the past and there does need to be some research on your part to figure out what story you're trying to tell, not dropping French mantles into traditional American homes where they would never have been, right? So how authentic do you wanna be? An understanding of that, but certainly as you try to recreate them in your home, looking at the past, practicing the past, using it as a guideline for, for how to build new, not taking something off the shelf. I looked guys and I, and I maybe saw one out of 500 mantles that were good. 
one out of 500. It's just, there's not many good mantles out there. The really good ones are the historic ones, are the salvaged ones. I love historic salvage yards. So look to the past, that's the best place to start. But building tradition into your property, whether it's mantles or doors or whatever it else, starts with looking to the past. A lot of these details, guys, I am sharing on Patreon. Patreon Passion for Crafts, so be sure to sign up if you're interested in any of that. Looking to the past, every week I put out a, a document or a video showing how to build. So I want to raise everybody's game. I want to improve the quality of building. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.